the greatest I'm, setup I've ever seen. I in love my it. Life. Thank you. Look thank at this you. crowd too. Y'all. I know. Yeah. Wait. It's so good to see y'all, but I've been like waiting for this moment ever since I saw a little commercial y'all doing the promo for The Voice. I'm obsessed with y'all being on there though. I think it's so cool. I know um, I've been on other voices or other things in other countries and they've had the double chair, but this is the first time there's been a double chair on The Voice in America. And this is the 25th season. So like, what is it like? Is it, do you have to share who gets to hit the button? The double chair is insane. We always said Blake was so big, they just put a divider down the yeah. center. It's just, we both sit in and out. Yeah. But uh, it's wild. We saw it for the first time, we were blown away. It takes up a lot of space up there. Yeah. First of all, just seeing those chairs, like they're iconic. You guys know those chairs yeah. are iconic. 25 seasons of The Voice. And it feels so fun and powerful when it, it moves feel, around. We feel twice yeah. as powerful as everybody else. You yeah. look at us on the thing, yeah. it's like we're taking up way more space. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have to put us at the front of the promo. So. Yeah. It's pretty I great. I love it's, it. It's awesome. There's it's nowhere else to put us. Exactly. No <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Smart. But I, I didn't know this about y'all. I felt like completely shocked about this knowledge, but you guys took like a break for a minute. I didn't know that. I thought you were just like, we're gonna chill, but you guys actually took a break and were just like, I need a minute, right? We've been at this for 10 years, right? Being yeah. in a duo, we always say, is like the toughest configuration of a group. Yeah. You've seen historically a lot of duos go their separate ways. It's like a marriage. If you're not going out of your way, if you're not being open with each other, if you're not communicating in real time, things yeah. can go separate. And, you know, we, we finished this tour. We did our first arena headlining run, like sold out Madison Square Garden, all yeah. these bucket list things. And we walked away and we were just like, you know, what was it all for? You're kind of just, you hit this like crazy little hangover period. Every work. artist does, by the way. Every yeah. artist does. And I was sitting there on the couch for like two weeks, wasn't reaching out to Shay, wasn't thinking about music, wasn't listening to music. And I was like, something's wrong. Like, I love music. It's everything to me, you know? And so Shay came over to the house and we just made a promise to ourselves to spend more time together, to go out of our way, to Shay come over to the house, like jam, make a song. If we don't have a song idea that day, just hang out, watch a movie, do, you know what I mean? Like catch yeah. up like we used to and changed everything. I feel like we got closer than we ever have and we're just in this new era of gratitude. Like that's the Bigger Houses song that, which we're performing here in a little bit. Oh my gosh, let's talk about Bigger Houses. This is so good by the way. It's Thank so well you. written, it's so Thank produced, you. so well sung, everything about it. What is this kind of the backstory for Bigger Houses? Is like you think we chase things and, it, and we always are chasing the next thing, but you know, never satisfied, is that? 100%, the first time I heard this song, it was just kind of, it felt like the first time in a really long time that, you know, as artists, obviously we get to be that storyteller. Yeah. And you know, we have songs like Tequila, you know, but you know, we're married and we've, you know, I have kids and I'm not in that place uh, of the singer of Tequila, but I'm able to, you know, play storyteller. We all get to do that. Tap in, yeah. But it's very rare that you get to sing a song that is, you know, act, you know, right where your life present. is at right there, very mm -hmm. present in, in bigger houses. We've had songs like that from the ground up. We wrote about our grandparents and that was awesome to be able to sing that. But this song, it felt like kind of for the first time, like my personal life and my band life came together. Those two were so separate for so long because Dan and I were kind of, for a while, they're going in different directions. And that was, you know, part of the problem. It wasn't that, you know, we were fighting. It was just that, you know, we, we had, were kind of going here. And when we realigned that and kind of got you know, our thing uh, together again, yeah. got it right. It was just like our family life and everything just came together. We just had to have that moment where we looked around and was like, man, it doesn't matter, all these things you could have. You know, we've won three Grammys, but we could win a hundred. You know, if that's gonna be your goal, you're always gonna be chasing after something, a higher high, you know, this, this thing that is this never ending, uh, you know, a checkered flag, I guess you could say. Yeah. And for us, it was just like, man, we have to get back to the real thing that matters. It's like the people that are in our lives and telling those people that we love them and making sure that we're nurturing those relationship and you know, taking stock and all that. And this is exactly where I'm at in life right now. I'm, you know, the second verse says, you know, I can hear the kids making little footsteps running down the hallway upstairs. Yeah. And I just, I put myself in that moment. I was like, I can't wait to, you know, I, I wasn't even a writer on the song. Dan was, but when I heard that song, it felt like I was right there in the writer's room and I was like, my goodness, man. that's like a man. fan, you're still a fan. Absolutely. Still a fan. It's the most think, important perspective, you know? And yeah. also, I think that's important, like what you're talking about too, or it's like, you're like, oh, there was no big like thing between y'all. It's like, I think all artists, all people in life, sometimes you feel stuck or sometimes yeah. it feels like monotonous and sometimes it feels, and you gotta wait to be inspired, you can't push it. For and sure. I think that that's fine. I think that's an important lesson, by the way, not only for, us, whoever's going through it, but like also to tell people. You're making us feel good. We're gonna like send it's that out so to the radio. Good. And be like, Kelly Clarkson likes it. It's so good. Thank you. This is not, this is like therapy. Yeah. It's like therapy. It's getting to catch up. It's unbelievable. And yeah. I'm so happy so to be on the do this. I know. I'm so sad about Make it. We're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on that. Working on it right oh now. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna text Audrey. Okay. Well, <laughs> stick around, everybody, because we've got a performance from Dan and Shay coming up later. Their new album is called Bigger Houses. You have to buy it. You have to check it out.